Culture Crew, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Culture Kids Storytime. Today I wanted to read you an autobiography. Do you know what an autobiography is? An autobiography is a true story written about someone that was not written by themselves, but by someone else. A biography is basically a first person story or someone who's actually lived that life who's writing about themselves. So that's the clear difference between autobiography and a biography. So in other words, someone who wrote about themselves or someone else who did a lot of research about someone's life and then wrote the book about them. So this particular book is an autobiography written by someone else about Leontine Price. Leontine Price was a very well-known and amazing opera singer who had a very tough beginning. She didn't have much money, came from very um, humble beginnings, but she still managed to be extremely successful and deserves all of our respect and an opportunity to tell her story. So I hope you enjoy today's um, selection of Leontine Price. Nineteen twenty-seven, Laurel, Mississippi. The line between black and white was as wide as the Mississippi River was long. All a black girl from the cotton belt could expect was a heap of hard work as a maid, mill worker, or sharecropper. Her song, most surely blues. Yes, the Mississippi Delta cradled misery, but from day one, Mary Violet Leontine Price heard a different refrain from her mama. Katie singing hymns, her daddy James playing tuba for the church band, and the flock greeting praise songs with hallelujahs. Leontine had plenty to be thankful for. A mom and daddy who made sure Leontine had two pairs of shoes and knew she was as good as anyone, black or white. Their song of encouragement rose above the color line. Wasn't long before Leontine was finding her voice, singing along to her daddy James's records and listening to the Metropolitan Opera's Saturday afternoon radio broadcasts. She soaked up the sopranos, if not the foreign words, art songs and arias shaping a brown girl's dreams. Soon, Leontine was plink clinking a toy piano until she caught the performing bug for good. Her parents sold their phonograph to pay for a real piano and for real lessons. At her first recital, her feet didn't even reach the pedals, but the songs came through her fingertips. Then little Leontine saw Marion Anderson, the opera singer from Philadelphia, who was already studying in Europe when Leontine breathed her first solo. Marion glided on stage in a whoosh of satin. Her song, like a torch, sparked a light in Leontine. That Easter Sunday in 1939, when Marion sang at the Lincoln Memorial after being barred from a whites-only concert hall, Leontine was in the church choir praising God with her gift. A song of promise welled up in Leontine as it had in young Marion. With her suitcase, she rode a bus to college in Ohio. Aiming to be a teacher, the concert stage out of reach for a black singer then. Until the college president heard her solo and convinced her to study voice instead, Leontine changed course. Led by song, she cracked the door that Marion had opened years earlier. And before long, Leontine went to Juilliard. There, she found her teacher Florence Page Kimball and her calling. But the door to Grand Opera would have to wait. First, Leontine starred in a Broadway, in the Broadway Porgy and Bess. On a tour, her song rose to the rafters. When the curtain did rise on Leontine's opera career, she took bows as Wild West Saloon owner Minnie, as Cio Cio San in Madame Butterfly, and as Cleopatra, Queen of the Nile. Yet certain doors her golden song could not open. In America, some hotels, restaurants, and stages were still whites only. But television brought Leontine into living rooms. Viewers saw that skin color didn't matter, voice did. And her song was as real as it was rich and rare. 
Leontine was never more majestic than as Aida, playing the part she was born to sing. As the Ethiopian princess with her skin as her costume, she expressed her whole self. Standing on Marion's shoulders, Leontine gave the crowd goosebumps. The song of her soul soared on the breath of her ancestors. When Leontine performed at the Metropolitan Opera House in 1955, she blew open the door that Marion left ajar. Six years later, Leontine had landed her first role with the Met in Tu Trovator as a noble lady in a tragic love story. She got a 42 minute standing ovation. The song of roaring applause shook the walls. Roses at her feet and tears in her eyes, Leontine bowed. She glimpsed the spotlight casting a shadow. She knew that shadow was not just hers, but her parents, teachers, and Marion's. Back in Laurel, Mississippi, songs of pride filled many a heart. The folks were bowing too. Yes, the world famous Miss Price could be all mink and pearls when she wanted to, rolling her R's like an Italian Contessa, wearing Venice hats and silk dresses from Rome. But off stage, she was just Leontine, twisting all night long, and her song sure wasn't the blues. The author's note. Born in Laurel, Mississippi in 1927, Mary Violet Leontine Price inherited the legacy of Marin Anderson, the first black singer to perform at the Metropolitan Opera House. Anderson gave a historic concert at the Lincoln Memorial after a Washington DC concert hall barred her because it was a white artist only policy. A pioneer in her own right, Price was the first black opera singer to perform on television in the United States and in leading roles at the Met and it in Italy's famed La Scala Opera House. The daughter of a sawmill worker and a midwife who sang in the church choir, Leontine showed musical talent at an early age. Her voice was given to her by God, her mother claimed. After seeing Marian Anderson in concert, Young Price envisioned a future on stage, but racism made it unlikely that a black girl from Mississippi would have a career as an opera singer. Price majored in music education at Wilberforce College in Ohio, planning to become a teacher and help pay her brother's way through school. Her voice led her in a different direction though, to change her major to voice, to study at the Juilliard School of Music and to pursue an opera career after seeing the opera to Toradant. Having achieved stardom in Broadway revival of Porgy and Bess, Price got her turn at Grand Opera after another singer fell ill. A lyric soprano, she dazzled in operas by Puccini, Mozart, and Verde. The title role in Verde's Aida as an Ethiopian princess made Price an international star. Despite her great fame, Price still encountered racism in the United States. To her credit, her wondrous voice overcame the obstacles. With more than a dozen Grammy Awards, she retired from opera in 1985 with a performance of Aida, but graced the concert stage for several more years. President Lyndon Johnson lauded Price's artistry when he awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom, a voice of stirring power and rare beauty, he proclaimed. Her singing has brought delight to her land. The path that Anderson braved, Price paved, making way for African-American divas like Jesse Norman, Grace Bumbry, Kathleen Battle, and Denise Graves. I hope you guys enjoyed this autobiography entitled Leontine Price, Voice of a Century. Make sure you support the author. Go check out this book. Go get this book and add it to your library. Thanks so much, guys. We hope that you'll join us next time for Culture Kids Storytime. Take care.